Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, GBT Georgia's October meeting. Um, we're really um, happy to be back with you after a really successful education month. Um, we're back today with another timely topic. We're excited to have Heather Pastrick, former G Georgia BTA president and vice president of sales with Enterprise Holdings with us today. She's gonna to speak on ground transportation and how that, uh, how COVID-19 has affected the car rental industry. Uh, before I get started, or before we roll into the program, I just have a few updates before turning it over to Rick George, who will give you a sponsorship update. And then we'll uh, turn over to Kim, who will introduce Heather and on into our program for today. So with regards to updates, I just have three for you. Um, I wanted to give you an update on where we are with our auction. Um, the auction is still virtual. That auction has been moved out to December. Um, you'll be able to start previewing items on November 30th, you'll actually be able to bid on items the 7th through the 10th. Um, our hope is that we're gonna be able to have a live event in December uh, for our mix and jingle with a very limited attendance. Uh, if we're able to make that happen, we would wrap the auction on the night of the mix and jingle with a live auction of you know, two to four items. We haven't determined what items would be auctioned. Um, but it would be a very minimal amount of items auctioned at the live event. Most items would be auctioned through the, uh, the hand bid application that we're using for the, this year's auction. Um, the live event, if it happens, would be at RT60, which is the at the Reverb uh, by Hard Rock. It's on the rooftop. <laughs> and uh, if you sat through our mix, uh, our happy hour a couple of weeks ago, you would have seen a little bit of that. I think Cam walked around with a laptop and gave us a a little showing of uh, what the rooftop looks like. Uh, and then after that, um, I wanna just touch on the next chapter meeting, which will be November 5th. Um, AdTrap is our sponsor for that meeting and the meeting will be, the topic for that meeting will be human trafficking, uh, which is always a popular topic for the chapter. Um, Avon Chen, Director of Private Sector Engagement will be our speaker for that, for that meeting. And then just finally, before I turn it over to Rick, um, just a reminder to keep your mics muted. If you have questions for Heather during her presentation, please use a chat feature for those questions. Kim Kearns will be collecting questions and um, uh, giving those questions to Heather at the conclusion of the presentation. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rick and let him do his sponsorship update. Hey, Dwight, uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's having a super Tuesday. I um, just wanted to give a couple of updates from uh, the sponsorship front. Um, we are still uh, very much seeking a auction sponsor for uh, December. And if, uh, if there are any interests, basically to uh, cover the cost of the uh, bidding uh, equipment that we'll be using electronically, uh, please reach out to me or, or to another board member. Uh, would really appreciate anything that uh, you may be able to give. Uh, I've been doing uh, outreaches to many of you, as, as uh, you probably know, through emails and, and phone calls, and completely understand that uh, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, around budgets for 2021. Uh, budgets are very tight. In some cases, there are no budgets. And um, I think it's going to be a very, uh, a very different uh, start to, uh, to the new year than uh, where we've been in, in the past. But uh, anything that you're able to give, we would truly appreciate it. And of course, it helps um, in, in so many ways with, uh, with the chapter. But I also did want to share uh, some good news that uh, we have three, actually four sponsors, uh, that have already committed for 2021 and uh, wanted to uh, uh, definitely recognize uh, those individuals. Uh, first of all, BCD uh, will be coming on again as our spring education sponsor. So we thank you super, super so much on, uh, on that. Uh, Topper Limo with Danny will continue as uh, our lanyard sponsor. Uh, hopefully we will be able to meet in person uh, as uh, um, as we get into the year, uh, and then also Helms Briscoe with uh, Jenny will uh, continue on as our registration table sponsor for 2021. And uh, special thanks to uh, Maria at Jekyll Island Authority, who has committed to a gold sponsorship for the new year. And we will be sending out more communications about uh, sponsorship as, uh, as uh, we get into uh, November and in December. 
Uh, but if you have any questions, if you would like to sign up in any capacity, uh, please reach out to me or anyone on the board, and we truly appreciate it. So with that, Kim, I will turn it over to you, Kim Kearns. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, so I probably have the easiest job that I've had all, all year for today. So um, the lady who needs no introduction, past uh, president. So gosh, it was hard to come up with what to say about um, Heather. So <laughs> so take it away, Heather. <laughs> Okay, so before I flip my screen, um, I am thrilled to be with you guys today. And we'll just start with an embarrassing fact on why we're playing, um, you know, Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. For those of you that were at BTA in, I think it was December uh, in Denver, probably four or five years ago, um, our travel agency team bullied us in, I will call it, to doing a lip sync challenge. And of course I was like, Sure, and then realized it might only be me. So I conned two of my other coworkers in, and I will tell you that we had a standing ovation for our rendition of um, It Takes Two to Make a Thing Go Right by Raw Bass and DJ Easy Rock. So if you have not downloaded that, I highly recommend it. So, <laughs> but uh, thank you for the sweet introduction. That is uh, hilarious. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about um, obviously what's going on in the car and in, in transportation space, because it's obviously a little bit um, different since COVID-19 happened. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that I'd love for you guys to do is we kind of go through this is, is, you know, if you've ever attended a meeting with me, this is going to be interactive. So what I would love for you guys to do is go ahead and take a look at um, the screen and I would love you guys to share what you all miss most since February of, of 2020. What are some of the things that we miss the most? And Kim, if you can check that chat box and keep me posted, that would be great because I cannot see the chat. Oh, there we go. Hang on. Maybe I can see it. Oh, friends and family flying, seeing lips, <laughs> hugs, um, seeing customers in person, travel, flying Delta International, hugs, 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 family and travel, bad coffee from stale pastries for in-person <laughs> events, uh, lip syncing at GBTA, massages, Delta One concerts, human contact, traveling to the U.S. Virgin Islands, in the British Virgin Islands. And I, I will tell you, I think um, these are all things that are so different and the world completely changed. Uh, I saw this, I wanted to kind of share with you the story of COVID. This picture of the home, and I thought it was so fitting, um, is actually in Will's neighborhood. And you can see um, their rest in peace grave sites of, you know, handshaking is gone. You know, the 2020 Olympics is gone. Uh, you know, crowds, live concerts, travel, common sense for crying out loud is completely gone um, as we can all relate. And I, I wanted to kind of walk backwards as I walk down the, the transportation path. And as most of you know, I was in an operational role up until May-ish of this year. And that second week of May, or excuse me, of March, my team and I were out visiting our local stores, passing out candy and coffee and pizza, telling all of our employees how fantastic they were. Um, and again, those are things that we do as a company all the time, but it was, it was National Employee Appreciation Day and everything couldn't have been nicer. The weather was nice, our people are nice, everybody's excited about 2020. Um, for us as an organization, we had our third generation CEO in and then the world completely stopped for lack of a better term. So for us and for a lot of the transportation industry, we kind of broke this down into three phases. So one was reacting to this, which all of us had to do. Um, I don't know how many of you guys have used the word pivot. 
um, to the point where it's a meme, you know, the, the friends meme where pivot, pivot here. Um, I think every single call that we had as a team had to do with pivoting in another direction and we're going to pivot in another direction. So if we could RIP the word pivot, that would be great. Um, and then how do we, what do we do is, as far as resetting um, is an organization and is transportation and travel and air and all of us are having to do some of that resetting and then reshaping what this is going to look like in the future. So one of the crazy things is, you know, obviously never before in history has international travel been restricted in the, in the way that it was. So we went from, and I, I almost remember it is a 2000, or excuse me, a 9-11 where we grounded all air transportation. This was so much worse than that. Um, and how do we handle this? And what does the CDC say? And, you know, really trying to figure out what and how long this is going to last. Um, so that's where we, we kind of started. For us as an organization, this is our third generation CEO, Chrissy. I know several of you have heard her speak at BTA or, uh, or GBTA um, or other BTN events. But for us, we're in this for the long haul, right? We had two main focuses. One, our employees and how do we keep people safe? And two, how do we keep our, our customers safe? That's what it came down to. And we've always been a very strong business. Um, we have a very strong balance sheet. And we have weathered these storms before as an organization. No different than all of us, a lot of us on the phone, um, even though I was not born yet, but um, kidding. You know, we weathered to, uh, the 2007, 2008, you know, economic downturn. We weathered, you know, 9-11. Several of you were around when the, gra the gas crisis hit. And these are all things that have affected travel in, in car rental or transportation in a huge way. So. This is something that we will absolutely come out of. As you guys know, we're just gonna look awfully different. So I wanted to share some stats with you that I don't know if you've seen, but what you'll see on here is our, the airport TSA numbers. So these we actually see every week, but as you can see this massive downturn that hit. So, you know, we went through March and then we hit rock bottom. OK, um, and obviously the airports, hotels, all of us were affected by that. And you can see this slow recovery. But even if I look onto October's numbers, which I got yesterday, um, so this is through August, October numbers, we're still back almost 60 percent in the air world. So there's that many less travelers going through TSA at those checkpoints. So, again, that inhibits all of us in regards to what we're doing on a daily basis. So obviously it's a tweaked a little bit on the car rental world. One of the things that you'll see in this picture is when this first hit, um, whether any of the rental car companies, and I know there's several on the phone, this is what we were dealing with, okay? So you think about how many cars are rented at an airport combined, it's a lot. And the first question on all of our minds is where in the heck do we park these cars? And we have a lot of them. So when you look at all the rental car companies combined, that was a major issue. I know the parking partners that we have on the phone did an amazing job of helping us find parking, but we were parking them anywhere and everywhere. The picture to your top left is the Del Mar Fairgrounds. The picture on the, the top right is actually in Kauai. Um, the picture, the very bottom, if you haven't read the bottom, that's Dodger Stadium with the rental cars. And then obviously you'll see the, the dumpster fire is I affectionately how fitting, right? Um, and we, so all of the major competitors had vehicles in that lot where um, it had a grass fire and unfortunately uh, a lot of units were lost. So this is something that, you know, again, how we, the first thing we were trying to do is what do we do with our vehicles? Because that's, we have capacity issues at most of our locations. So for us, we kind of reacted in a couple ways and a lot, of, a lot of the transportation providers out there did that. One was we need to stay open to support the essential services. As, as, as a lot of you know, we support the federal government um, and local entities that still are traveling and you know, uh, medical relations, construction, all of that was still happening and we needed to stay open. However, we really bared down on our service offerings. So along with a lot of the other transportation providers on the phone, we, we closed some of our locations temporarily to funnel into one, controlling how many people are in a store and then how many customers are in a store. So those are some of the things that we focused on. We turned everything to more of a curbside um, delivery 
model versus having travelers walk into a location. Um, and then I'll obviously also offer delivery services to again, really promote social distancing in that piece. Um, when you look at what was going on with transportation across the board, we had to evaluate, okay, one, we need to park the car, right? Just keep it parked and deal with it. Two, rent the car, which was really difficult in those months when you see what's going on at the airport. And then obviously the amount of states and counties and re, you know, reclosures that were happening across the, the U.S., um, and inbound traffic from, from overseas, that was something that was a challenge to just rent a car. Um, and then, or do we sell our fleet um, and pull that fleet down? Because obviously it's very costly to have a bunch of cars sitting and not earning any type of revenue. So we handled that a little differently across the board. I wanted to share with you, these are some pre-COVID uh, fleet numbers and then kind of some things that are going on in the news that you guys can see. So um, obviously we've had a lot of discussions with several customers about what's happening in the travel space. So we did reduce our fleet a little bit. We came pre-COVID, we were at 1.2 million cars. Um, and as far as uh, North America goes, you can see where, you know, these are all from auto rental news. So these are not my figures, they're auto rental news figures. Uh, Hertz and Dollar Thrifty combined were about 506 and Avis and Budget were 365. Um, you can see obviously across the board what's happening with um, ourselves as far as fleet and what's going on with some of our, our competitors because obviously we, we um, have had some concerns uh, over, the, over the months and all of us have of generating revenue in those low points. So those are some of the things that are, that are going on and I can, I'm gonna speak to in a moment about what this looks like as far as a, as a buyer um, and both as a supplier. So as we reset expectations, things changed a little bit. Um, obviously most people were concerned about what we could do at the airport for them. Um, they needed a car at the airport. The majority of the corporate business was done at the airport. Um, and the focus on duty of care in regards to car rental wasn't nearly as strong. As we've gone into post COVID or resetting expectations, consumers are extremely worried about infection, right? As the slide says, exposure to infection, they want assurances that, that we're taking care of them, um, that the car is clean, that, you know, I know a lot of you guys were on the call with Delta and, you know, what are the airlines doing? What are hotels doing? Um, what are car rental companies doing to ensure that, that everything is clean? I will tell you, I, I have taken, I took my first trip and um, the hotel was immaculate, the, the plane was immaculate, social distancing, masks, the whole nine yards. So I, I feel very confident about travel and obviously also confident on what we're doing as an organization. So I wanted to add this slide because you can kind of see as far as the phases of travel that a lot of you guys are reporting and our customers are reporting. So phase one is a lot of people are driving. So one of the things that is driving that is one, the the capacity at the airlines, they're not running as many routes, so that's causing some issues. And several people feel that it's safer to drive a car versus jumping in an airplane. So they're electing to do that. Um, the second phase is really going to be that domestic travel, all open, and then the international travel. So one of the other things that we're going to see is this shift from, you know, everything being a face-to-face -face meeting, I think, to a hodgepodge of you know, one face-to-face -face meeting and then probably a Zoom call, things like that. So it's going to be a little bit of a mixed bag as we go forward in regards to what this travel situation is going to look like. But we have seen companies go as far as 10 to 12 hours allowing their people to drive to go see a customer or for business reasons, which is uh, insane compared to the old days. But definitely something that we're seeing more and more, and we'll get to that. For us, our responsibility was very, very easy. We committed as an organization to a clean car pledge. Everybody from senior leadership on down went through a retraining process on making sure that all of our cars are sanitized, our shuttles are sanitized, our branches are sanitized to make sure that everything is clean for the guests that come in. I know that both Hertz and Avis as well really promoted this is they, they came out of COVID into kind of a reset expectation because there were a lot of questions on that. Um, we also included and we've launched a no touch, low touch. Our goal is to get our customers out of our locations and get that transaction as fast as possible. Um, so those are some of the things that we've used in all lines of our business because again, a lot of our travelers are known travelers per se, they're, they're profile travelers, which has helped. 
So on here, the other thing that what we felt from the customers through, you know, surveying them and whatnot is really what's the, the mode of transportation that they prefer. So you'll see cruises are out, right? <laughs> I don't know anybody that's booking a cruise right now and is excited to, to you know, go to Wuhan. But um, obviously cruises, public transportation uh, is, is a low one, taxis, ride hailing, then you've got air and car rental. This is older, this is an older stat, but I think that again, that that's gonna continue to climb up, but the confidence in some of those really public shared, um, whether it's public transportation or cruises, or even some of the um, peer-to-peer uh, rental piece is, is gonna be adversely affected because is who's cleaning the car um, and what's their, uh, what are their requirements for that versus dealing with a, a major corporation. So for us, I, I talked about the drive versus flying. One of the things that we've heard from, from travel managers and travel profession, professionals and procurement is you know, we, don't, we don't mind if they drive their own car. Um, and we 100% we understand that they don't wanna travel by air. But one thing we also wanna be mindful of is you can still can try and control costs is evaluating which is the best method to travel. So is it better for me to drive my own car to whether that be Nashville or for a 10 hour drive or whatnot and get paid you know, at the IRS rate, which would equal $253 on a two day trip versus renting a car and with fuel reducing that cost to 136. So really making sure that you talk to your travelers about that um, and encouraging them to understand the clean car pledge that's out there so that again, you don't see this mileage reimbursement spike up in your organization um, versus, you know, hey, you do have, still have some control on that and obviously control the duty of care piece. As we look at reshaping, so we went into that reaction mode to, okay, what is this gonna look like down the road? I think when we deal with our backs being up against the wall, I know I can speak personally, we tend to get things done very quickly, right? When we're under stress, things happen extremely fast compared to sometimes when we plan things out is whether that's an organization or personally. So one of the things that we've seen through COVID is we were able to take our airport fleet and shift it into our, what we call home city or neighborhood locations. So there are more transactions happening um, more and more in that local market than there are at the airport market. The airport continues to what I would call turtle crawl back um, is a small turtle crawl, um, but that local market is obviously recovering quite well, which is nice. So that's not all coming from corporate business. That's coming from retail business. Um, people are taking trips, driving trips far more than they're flying as families. They're renting bigger cars and they're keeping those cars longer. So those three things are, are obviously affecting that piece, which is driving demand up, okay? Um, the other thing that we looked at is kind of, hey, how do we deliver our confidence to our customers and our, our corporate partnerships that we have and all the other partnerships that we have? We want to continue to drive loyalty. Again, that service and value. And then how do we weave in technology to that? For us, one of the things that we had all hands on deck was, with was really driving technology. And how do we take all the information that we know about a customer and execute that transaction? So it's similar to an Uber Eats when they drop my food at the front door and I don't even have to talk to them. So that's really what we've invested a lot into is this low touch, no touch um, technology and communicating with the customer in advance to get them in and out of stores, whether that be local stores or the airport um, in a fast and efficient manner. Um, technology is something that we, we actually have a, 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 a venture capitalist arm that, that partners with all different types of technology and keeps an eye on that because it's we're really not a transportation company, we're a mobility company. And for us, that's gonna look very different as we go forward because that's how do I move you from one spot to another and what's the best mode of transportation for that is, is I think what travel is going to look like. I was on a call yesterday with a, a potential customer and they said, what do you think travel is going to look like in five years? And I just kind of chuckled. I was like, well, why don't you ask me what travel is going to look like in six months? Because that's a better you know, gauge in five years, who knows? I wouldn't have been able to predict the pandemic and I sure can't predict what travel is gonna look like, but I will tell you it will be driven off of technology, artificial intelligence, 
um, and data, you know, really focusing on big data to get that traveler and, and obviously reporting back to the company to, to focus on duty of care and reporting. So in our world, that's kind of what that looks like. So for us, that low touch piece has to do with one, the check-in. How do I prepare that customer to come get everything in front? Um, so that the customer doesn't have to give me anything when they when they walk in the door. When they arrive, they don't actually have to touch a, any, anybody, talk to anybody. They can let us know. And then obviously on the return, that's where we are right now, is using some of that technology to return the vehicle and again, not, not touch or talk to anybody and do everything remotely um, via the technology, whether that's an app that they're using or their email address or texting, however they want to communicate. So we call it a customer experience, um, but definitely this is something that I think as we go forward and we work with some of the other data and security partners that we have, how do I get a car when I want it, how I want it, without, if that's at two o'clock in the morning and we're not open, what is that going to look like for the traveler? And I think that's what, you know, if I could fast forward five years, I think that's really what transportation is going to look like. So very excited about that. Um, for us, there's a couple things that we've seen on the trending side. One is supply and demand. So with that, if you looked at those fleet numbers from that first slide or the first couple slides, um, you can see there were, there were a lot more cars pre-COVID than post-COVID. So when you think about what's happening at the airport in the local market, you see the demand going up from not only corporate crawling back, but retail business, um, insurance replacement business, all of those other lines that kind of feed that and which is causing pricing to rise. So when you look at car rental and what's happening in an airport, I had a, a customer that I was talking to earlier today and he's like, well, your rates were like $17 in February or in March and now they're not. I was like, yes, we would have paid you to rent the car in March if you wanted, um, but now obviously business is up and it's no different than the airline. That supply and demand piece is, is critical. So that is gonna be a huge piece. Um, the other thing that's happened is with that supply being down and, and people are asking, hey, why is supply down? One, we sold via some vehicles. You also have to understand that the manufacturers during COVID shut down and started making ventilators. So they also that supply constant push of vehicles coming out slowed down drastically. The other thing that happened is there was so much uncertainty on what do we need moving forward that again, lease vehicles, which is what we all fall under, is a, is a key piece for a lot of the manufacturers. So when we're not buying vehicles, the general public wasn't out buying vehicles either. There's a huge halt in manufacturing. So we're still catching up from that. So that's really, it's twofold. One, you got rid of some cars and then two, the onslaught of vehicles has not been pushed out yet. So I'll use, you know, it says certain cha vehicle challenges, trucks. We do have a lot of construction business that we work with. It does a lot of travel and the truck piece is something that the manufacturers haven't, haven't pushed those out. So there's just a shortage of them. Um, and it has, it's a, it's a cross, you know, rental car world problem. Um, but these are some of the things that we've definitely heard. Um, because of that less fleet, we've had companies reach out um, talking about, hey, picking up another provider. Maybe I was a sole provider with company A, B, or C, and I've elected to pick up a secondary provider because of availability issues. So that's something that we've encouraged um, simply because, you know, at the end of the day, if I have a traveler and I can't get a car with one company, I'd much rather have some sort of a secondary agreement than have no agreement and pay rack pricing. So that rack pricing, and you can you know get on Travelocity or Google, just look at Atlanta on an average Tuesday or Monday or Wednesday and look at what the price is, and you'll, your eyes might pop out if you're a, a buyer on the call. Cycle times may be affected. So obviously as demand goes up, if I have customers that need those cars, I'm less likely to pull those cars. So cycle time for us means how long do we hold the car? How many miles do we hold the car at? So some of that may be affected because of COVID. Um, where companies are running cars a little bit longer. So normally we would sell cars anywhere from six to eight-ish months where some of that might be stretched a little longer um, pending on the company and how they're cycling and their ability to purchase cars and things like that. So that's another piece. 
Um, the off airport piece is going to be a faster recovery. We already know that. We've seen it on our own, our own numbers, on our own statement, that that off airport piece is going to come back much quicker than the other piece. And then some, we are hearing some small uh, rumblings from some of the smaller airports. So it's very costly, as you guys probably know, or you see on a rental car receipt to do business at an airport. There's a lot of fees that are associated with that, uh, rent factors that are associated with that. So we have had um, some uh, rental car companies pull out of some of those smaller airports because they, are, they can't sustain those smaller airports. The last thing that I wanted to mention that's not on here, it has to do with technology and the connected car. And I don't know if you've heard that term, um, but obviously I know you've probably all have heard of big data, right? Artificial intelligence and how do they know, you know, how, and I don't know how many of you guys have seen the movie off of Netflix, the social, I think it's a social dilemma um, when it talks about, you know, how, how does Facebook or Instagram know exactly what I, you know, want to buy today. So when you think about the connected car and the, the automobile manufacturers obviously have a lot of intel on the vehicles that we're purchasing from them. We have currently about 180,000 connected cars in our fleet and we're gonna continue to push that number up. And what that's gonna allow us to do on a low touch, no touch type um, you know, transaction is really when a customer goes to pick up a car, once we connect the car to the contract, because of the technology coming off the car, it will tell us what the gas and mileage is on the vehicle, which is amazing because we don't have to get in the car, right? When the customer returns, we scan the car and the car automatically tells us what the gas and mileage is. So is this, when you think about what a car can communicate to us, it can communicate the gas, the mileage, whether it was in a, technically in a collision, when it was in a collision, all of those things. So there's a lot of cool technology that we've invested in and the, the manufacturers are pushing off. And then it's how do we use that to help you guys supply duty of care and for us to make it a fast, efficient, effective transaction for the customer so that they feel great about doing business with our organization. So um, is, you know, as you see that in your, you know, whether you're renting at an airport or a, a local store, those are some of the things that you're going to see from our organization to try and make that a quicker process. So um, lastly, obviously, when, when travelers are ready, we're ready for you, right? Our, our locations across the network are about 95% open. So we've reopened all of our locations. We have we did furlough employees. We've hired a ton of employees back. We're thrilled for that. Um, we are ready, open, and willing to help travelers, and we're super excited about it. I can tell you one of the things that our CEO kind of started with, and if you if you know me, I say this all the time, right? Like we've got this, and I know that that sounds so cliche, but we started. She started a hashtag back in March when she started dealing with this. And here's, I, I found this quote and I thought it was very, you know, fitting, right? Um, for 2020 in so many different ways, because not only does it have to do with transportation guys, it has to do with all of the things that you guys are challenged with, whether it's, hey, I've been furloughed. I have a different role with the company. I am a travel buyer and I am, am now responsible for 16 other things because I'm willing to do whatever it takes. I thought, you know, and so this is the quote, and once the storm is over, you won't remember how you made it through, how you managed to survive all this COVID-19. Uh, you won't even be sure whether the storm is actually over, right? Because we don't really know. We, we get a little comfortable and then all of a sudden cases spike. But one thing is for certain, right? When we come out of the storm, we won't be the same person who walked in and that's what the storm is all about, right? This is not going to be our biggest challenge in travel in 10 years, right? I don't know what that challenge is gonna be, but we weather these storms together just like we did in, in uh, you know, when 9-11 happened, no one have, would have ever thought, hey, this is, this is gonna happen and it did and we weathered through it and we made it through it and we recovered. And here's another storm that hit and we're gonna recover through this together, supporting each other as we always do as a business organization. And then how do we take these lessons that we've learned and make our business better? And I think that, you know, as I deal with 2020 in so many different ways, I think, how do you make yourself better, right? How are you a better leader? How are you a better communicator? How are we a better company? And how do we serve our traveler or customer better because of what we've been through? 
So those are the things that I think as we go through travel, what we're going to see or transportation, what we're going to see is, is kind of this all pans out after, after COVID-19, whenever that might be. So what questions do you guys have? Well, Heather, we have had a couple of questions come in. So okay. far, um, the first one, how is enterprise handling employee COVID testing uh, to protect both your employees and customers? Great question. So we are taking temperatures every day, right? Um, our, we have a strict policy that if you have any type of symptoms, you are to stay home. Um, if somebody tests positive, we end up we end up closing the branch down temporarily. We end up testing all the employees. Um, they're staying home to self quarantine. So we're following all of those CDC regulations. I, I believe Daphne Murphy, who's my HR, uh, one of my HR folks, is on the phone, and that is, I think, her full time job now is dealing with COVID. So really making sure that they have to have two negative tests before they come back. So we take that safety of our employees extremely serious so that, again, we can take that traveler safety very serious. We're all wearing masks. We're all in gloves. Um, all, we're fumigating our stores. And then we obviously have also asked our customers to wear masks as well when they're on our premises. Have you had any um, situation, this is a side question, just as you said that, have you had situations where you've had to close locations because of it, or is that something you're... So one of the things, you know, obviously, if you have a location, I'll choose any of them, and I test positive, we want to make sure that all the other employees test positive. Now, during this time, the technology that we use to basically funnel in reservations, and then we move them to other stores... We're using that. So if we close a location, let's say for a day, so we can fumigate, clean, test employees, it might shut down for a day. We then turn around, call all those customers, reroute them to the next closest store, and then reopen that location. So we're not in a, a long-term closeout, but obviously that safety of the location and the safety of the employees and the customers is critical. Great, thank you. Um, another question came in about the touchless experience with technology and apps. Is, will that be available at worldwide locations? We've launched it in, um, so we started testing touchless in a few of our groups. The connected car piece was rolled out recently to all of our US locations. Um, but just as the way most of our companies are, when we start a process, we test it in a few markets, work out all the bugs, and then move it to country, then move it overseas. So yes, um, definitely any of our technology, similar to the launch pads, we use little iPads outside of the cars now. Um, all of that will end up going global, absolutely. Great, fantastic. Um, those were the questions that came in. Um, I do have another one based on what you were talking with earlier about the phases of mm -hmm. return. Um, what's your projection? I know we're not going to talk five years down the road, but, but what are you seeing or hearing from your customers about return to travel? Yeah, I think, you know, and a lot of us are still at home, right? So we're working from home. A lot of companies are not putting people back into a building until they're not even discussing it until January of 2021. I think pending the um, vaccine and then the availability of that vaccine, I think we will most likely be dealing with this. And, and I hate to say it, probably into 2021, for sure. I think I'm hoping the back half of 2021 will be out of this in a, in a more global way um, to get people back to normal. I think consumer confidence, it, we're gaining for sure. So I think, you know, if you, if you rewind to, you know, March, April, May, you had a lot of people that refused to get on an airplane. And now I think there, people, are, people are willing to do it. Um, there's, you know, they're holding middle seats, things like that. So I think a lot of people have confidence or are gaining confidence back in travel. Um, we, and I know several of you guys have done LinkedIn notes or podcasts on your travels, um, because that's what people want to see is, okay, I haven't done it yet. So how's this going to be? And, um, it's a seamless process. So I think the more we talk about, um, how safe it is to, to travel, whether that's air, car, hotel, you know, uh, limo company, those are things that we need to talk about to, to help that consumer confidence for sure. But I think it's going to come back. It's just going to be a slow, slow crawl, unfortunately. That's a good point though. We need to be doing the, the PR, the social push on any, the travel that we're doing. 
Uh, yeah. We do have another question that came in regarding holiday travel. What stats and numbers are you seeing, especially compared year over year? Yeah, I, I think if you look at holiday travel, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you will see more driving for sure. So reservations on car, have, those are strong holidays no matter what. Um, but I would, I, I believe it's going to be much heavier um, because people want to get a bigger car when they go with family, right? Or, hey, I'm going with friends and I want to attempt to social distance. Uh, but I definitely think there's going to be a boom around the holidays because there's still, you know, you think about the weekend business. The weekend business was not our strongest business as a, in industry, especially not in Atlanta. Um, and we've turned into a weekend company because in, in industry, because so many people want to go somewhere for the weekend and they're locked down and they, but they don't feel quite comfortable, you know, airlining it. So I think the holidays are going to be really strong for us. Um, and then as we go into next year, pending the lockdowns in certain states, and as, as you guys watch the news as much as I do, um, you have spikes in certain areas. So that's going to obviously affect travel in a, in a huge way in any type of quarantining that's done um, because it's also flu season. So I think, you know, there's a little bit of a trifecta happening um, with what's going on. And then obviously, as we get past probably next March, things will, I'm hoping, calm down a little bit. Okay, well, thank you very much. And um, we typically, and I, I should have asked you this prior, but we typically um, like to get the presentations to post them on the website. Um, will that be okay to get this from you? Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Now, before I turn it back over to Dwight, are there any other questions? Anyone wanna come off mute and ask directly to Heather? Oh, here's another one that came in. Um, has COVID shifted some share from Uber Lyft back to car rental? Um, so obviously Uber and Lyft do not report, you know, there's not as much uh, direct data coming from them, but I can tell you, uh, I, there's no way it hasn't. Um, I do not think the consumer confidence in Uber and Lyft is probably what it was, uh, before because that duty of care piece is critical. And, you know, if you think about it, it's kind of exposed some of that compared to what it was. When you think about uh, the ride sharing piece of Uber and Lyft, and, and I think all the car rental companies would, would speak to this, we've always wanted to be on an equal footing with them, um, whether it has to do with taxes or the way safety is regulated with recalls. Um, there are definitely some things that we have to follow as, as a, an organization, us, Hertz, Avis, Six, all of us, um, that they do not have the same regulations. So um, I think for us, it's, hey, how do we get on an equal playing field? But I definitely think that duty of care and safety, um, I don't know if anybody's taken an Uber or Lyft recently, but I can tell you that it's, they didn't wipe the car down before the, the last customer was in, at least not in my experience. So um, that's something to, to definitely consider. I, and maybe some of the buyers could um, you know, share their experiences or what their travelers are doing. Any input from anyone? I can, just, I can say from, um, from what we're seeing in our company, we're not recommending Uber or Lyft. And, and we have actually we have, uh, you know, an agreement in place with Lyft, but just because of safety issues, um, we're still strong on the partnership, but until we're comfortable that the cars are being, you know, sanitized in whatever way they can be sanitized between trips. We're just not real comfortable with it. Okay. Um, and then also just a side note, uh, Stephen Hicks had posted in the chat, I, I don't know if everyone saw this, that there's a video out on what it looks like for travel during COVID. So we'll make sure to get that link and um, have that posted for you as well, but you can copy and paste it if you'd like. And let's see, um, we have another comment. Um, my Lyft driver still didn't know which side of the street I was on. They were wearing a mask at least. <laughs> That's <good. laughs> I love it. Um, all right, well, Heather, can't thank you enough. Um, as thank always, you, you were just um, full of great information, uh, great nuggets. I'm sure everyone's taking some fabulous information away. So I have to say that picture of the car fires, that's just, not not a way of finding a way to uh, get rid of, of cars when you don't need no, to. No, no, well, no, not hardly. 
So with that, um, Dwight, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you, Kim, and, and thank you, Heather. Uh, great presentation. Any presentation that starts off with it takes two is good <laughs> with me. So thank, you, thank you for a great start. Um, uh, before we wrap up, I just want uh, to put out a few updates or a few reminders uh, that our next board meet, our next chapter meeting is November 5th. Again, that is uh, sponsored by AdTrav and it's with Devon Chen, uh, speaker on human trafficking. And again, that is November 5th. Uh, you're, you are able to register for that right now. Um, reminder to fill out our surveys uh, whenever they are released after the meeting. Uh, I think Donna will have that out momentarily following this meeting. And um, we're on Facebook and LinkedIn, so check us out. And the last thing I'll leave you with is um, as we roll into the end of the year, we start thinking about next year. Um, we are looking at um, our board. And if you are have any interest in joining our board, um, please reach out to me directly. Uh, you can do that at dwight.minio at allscripts.com. And I think it is on the communication that Donna sent out yesterday. Um, we would be, we would love to um, have some fresh blood. And uh, I think with that, I will wrap it up and give you about 30 minutes back in your schedule. So, yay, Dwight. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Y'all take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Heather. Bye-bye.